Welcome back to another Dark One Vlog. I'm here by myself yet again, and I'm going to be talking about the uh, Pokemon Direct that was given to us earlier today at time of recording. Uh, so yeah, earlier today we got a Pokemon Nintendo Direct, a Pokemon themed Nintendo Direct, all about their future plan, future plans for the Pokemon games for the year. Uh, basically speaking. If you look at the algorithm for when Nintendo gives out information on Pokemon games, they always give something out towards the, basically right before E3 happens, like end of May, beginning of April, and this year they cut it real close to the deadline, like right before E3, and decided to announce two new games as well as a, as well as a virtual console release. Let's go over the least exciting news, which honestly is still pretty exciting, and the fact that Gold, Silver, and Crystal are getting... Uh, well, Gold and Silver are getting uh, like virtual console releases on 3DS, which is pretty cool. You know, with this, we'll pretty much have access to every generation on the DS system. Uh, and it's an interesting way to play a classic, to play some of the classic games, similar to Pokemon, you know, when they released Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow last year. I'm a bit sad that they're not including Crystal version, as that was my preferred version of the Gen 2 games. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people's preferred version. But it is a pretty fun idea for a nostalgia trip. I mean, for a nostalgia trip to go back in time and play those old games. If you're like me and have fond memories of playing those really old games. Now, let's talk about the big thing. First, Pokemon Tournament on the Switch. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, but let's quickly talk about this. I'm super excited. I was kind of disappointed that we didn't get the DLC for the various characters they added into the arcade version. For those of you who don't know, they added in Empoleon, Darkrai, uh, Krogunk, and Scizor to the arcade version. But we never got them in the console version. And I was disappointed at that, because, especially because Darkrai is one of my favorite Pokemon. But because, you know, adding more characters into a fighting game is kind of pivotal. But then they go ahead and say, no, no, we have this deluxe version coming out on our new system, the Switch. Like, everyone was kind of hinting that they were going to do a new version of Pokemon Tournament for the Switch. And I'm happy to say that those rumors were right and that we have, like, five new characters. The previous four that I mentioned, as well as Decidueye, will be joining the cast on the roster. Which is pretty cool, seeing we guys have Gen 7 representation in there. It's Honestly, a pretty good idea. I'm still disappointed that we don't have, like, obvious Pokemon like Greninja in there. But I'm also disappointed that they didn't put Incineroar in the game. Incineroar's entire deal is that it's a heel Pokemon, a wrestler Pokemon. This game seems like it would be the perfect game for Incineroar, but I guess Sidua is the most popular out of the, you know, Alolan starters. So that's why they put him in the game, which I'm fine with, but I still kind of... Want this in order to show up, maybe as DLC sometime. I imagine they're still going to pump out new characters every so often on the arcade version. If you don't think they're done with it quite yet. I mean, I'm pretty sure, because you know, this is also developed by a team that does Tekken. I'm pretty sure they took a break from Pokken so they can finish working on Tekken 7 and get that out. But now that it's out, they can go back to doing, make, maybe splitting up work and adding characters to both games. Because I would love to see... Again, Incineroar seems like a perfect fit for this game, and it seems like just a waste not to have it in there. Uh, that's just my fan griping. I will pretty much be happy with this new version of Pokemon Tournament, and look forward to playing Decidueye a lot, because he looks pretty interesting. I kind of want a full character trailer for him, but I will be trying to main Darkrai from here on out, because Darkrai. Okay, so, now the... Big news. Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. So for the past few ever, ever since Sun and Moon came out, there's been this constant rumor of Pokemon Stars. Basically the third version to Sun and Moon. And it has been kind of annoying, if you're me. Like every other video YouTube recommends me is Pokemon Stars confirmed, Pokemon Stars, Pokemon Stars, Pokemon Stars. It's like, dear God, people, make another type of fucking video. It's like people going over evidence that Pokemon Stars will be a thing. As well as the fact that they're saying it'll be on the Switch. I'm like, so, I, so, I'm going to, before I talk about the game, I'm going to talk about the fans' reaction. Basically, I've seen a lot of comments that people are super disappointed that this isn't a game on the Switch. And I'm going to say, you are talking about the Pokemon franchise, right? The franchise that's mainly for young kids. 
like as much as I'm an adult Pokemon fan, the Pokemon fan, the Pokemon franchise is a kids franchise. It appeals more towards children. Like yes, it has some deeper levels for adult players, the people who've been playing it for since Red and Blue. But it's ultimately a, ch a child franchise. That's why Ash is still ten years old because that's their target demographic. So I'm not surprised it's still on the 3DS because it's basically speaking. I imagine it's easier to convince parents to buy more than one 3DS than it is for them to buy more than one Nintendo Switch. As Nintendo Switch, while it still has portability as a feature, it's still seen as a home console. And then the and the Pokemon franchise are games that are rudiment that are basically rooted in being handheld games. On top of that, the connectivity issue between the 3DS and the Switch. Before anyone mentions Monster Hunter, that was over Wi-Fi. That connectivity is over Wi-Fi. And that won't work for a Pokemon game because that has to have local play. You get what I'm saying? Basically speaking, local play is like the big thing for Pokemon. You know, using your own wireless signal to connect to someone else's wireless signal. I mean, again, link cables are a thing, or were a thing. So, I, so basically, there's a bunch of reasons why it wasn't going to be on the Switch, and now that it's confirmed that it's not on the Switch, everyone's super disappointed, and a lot of people are super disappointed. And I'm like, you guys should have seen this coming, especially considering the fact that from the fact that Nintendo has never released a different generate a new. Basically speaking, since it's being, I'm using Black 2 White 2 as an example, those games still came out on the DS, despite the 3DS already being out. So, we're still in Gen 7, so they're not going to release a new, you know, they're still in Gen 7, so they're not going to release a new version of that into, onto a new console, and leave the people who have 3DSs high and dry. Again, especially with Nintendo's financial reporting, from if you looked into that, which some people do, because they're I guess nerds like me, they are, they basically have a plan to sell about a bunch of 3DSs and without like a main Pokemon game coming out this year, it was practically impossible because like the only, only 3DS games that were coming out from the Nintendo themselves, from what I know, there was uh, Oasis, I, mean, I can't remember that game's full title, but the game with the Oasis, Hey Pikmin, and one other game, but I forgot what it was called, too. Basically speaking, a bunch of games that really weren't that interesting. Like, after Final Echoes, that was pretty much it from Nintendo. Until Final Emblem Warriors happens, and we don't know when that's coming out. Like, it's probably early next year. Yeah, but now we have Pokemon games, and it's like, oh, okay, this is what they had planned for the rest of the year. Anyway, I've been ranting long enough. Let's talk about the actual Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. Uh, we only got a really short 20-second 20, 20 trailer very similar to what we got for X and Y. I'm honestly going to say it's a lot better than the original Sun and Moon reveal, which was a big disappointment as we only got like a wireframe pick a pet. But this, in this one, we got a look at an all new, an all new look at Alola, a look at, you know, some interesting forms of Lunala and Solgaleo as they seem to be somewhat fused with Necrozma in a similar way to Kyurem, but more like Necrozma's overlaying on top of them. I'm going to call this battle armor for now because it kind of looks like armor for these two. And the title Ultra Sun Ultra Moon, which obviously hints at Ultra Space. So first off, I want to, before I talk about the trailer footage that we got, I want to talk about the what Ken Sugimori said when he came on screen. Because Ken Sugimori came on screen for about a few seconds to basically talk about the upcoming game. And he used the word alternative take. Oh, words, alternative take. Which, in my mind, says this isn't a sequel. Which would be interesting. And like basically speaking, I do see room for a Sun and Moon sequel, but I don't think Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon are directly a sequel. I believe that they might be an alternate universe. They also did mention we'll see Pokemon we haven't seen in different forms, but also hints at, at the possibility of alternate universes, because with alternate universes, we can have different forms with different Pokemon. Basically speaking, we can get some new Alola forms in there, some you know, different forms for previous Alolan Pokemon, and evolutions and whatnot. 
because of the different universe. Now, the Pokemon franchise has been kind of dabbling with the idea of alternate universes like for a while now. They've only outwardly been dealing with it since, uh, since you know, Omega, Ruby, Alpha, Sapphire with the whole, you know, throw the media over to an alternate universe thing. But it is interesting to see them kind of hint at that. Obviously, the Ultra in the title is again referring to Ultra Space, and maybe we'll get to explore Ultra Space a bit more. Maybe that'll be a bigger part of the story. And honestly speaking, I'm 100% okay with that. Like, one of my biggest disappointments for Sun and Moon was that we didn't really go into the idea of Ultra Space as much as we could have. And it seems like this game will do that, which is kind of cool. Overall, I am kind of happy with this direct. I would, I would be happy if we got some more Pokemon games, but again, it's getting a new, getting Pokemon tournament again, getting you know Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, as well as Gold and Silver, all within this year is pretty cool. Like you know, so we got Pokemon tournament and Ultra and and uh, Gold and Silver coming out in September, and then Ultra Sun and Moon coming out two months later in November, and I'm like, oh, awesome! I can't wait for those. So, yeah, overall, I'm going to say I'm pretty excited for the Direct. I I won't say it's their best. Honestly speaking, it's a lot better than the Sun and Moon, original Sun and Moon reveal. And overall, I'm kind of happy with what we're getting. Although, again, like every Pokemon fan, I kind of want more. <laughs> like, we're all, <laughs> we're all Disney princesses going, I want more. <laughs> I cannot sing. But, yeah, we all just want more. Uh, so overall, that's all I have to say about this. No, no in-depth trailer stuff. Just want to give my opinions and whatnot. I will say that they were already find differences in the trailer as in the... Because we have different character designs. Not only that, but we have different... Uh, there's a Switch instead of a Wii U in the bedroom. So that... No. Also, Universe confirmed. <laughs> but again, we're still not full of surf. It's a full-on sequel if there's an alternate universe kind of deal. But either way, it's a cool idea. And I'll see you all next time.